Welcome back to another Rev Talks. I'm Michelle. Uh, I'm Randy. We're the owners of Revolutionize, and today we're going to talk about the importance of counting macros as opposed to just counting calories. Yes. Ten reasons why. And this is something, you know, you've probably heard from us numerous times, but, you know, we're going to put it in organized, orderly fashion so it's there for the future as well. We'll try to stay as organized as possible. That's sometimes a weakness of ours. Yes. So let's start off with number one. So what is the first reason why we choose to count macros over just calories? And that's enhanced nutrition quality. So you want to focus on the macronutrients and encouraging indivi individuals to prioritize nutrient-dense foods. Now, this is where IIFYM, if it fits your macros, can actually get a bad reputation because people think, oh, I can eat this ice cream or this yes. cookie to fit my macros. And when someone's in an obscene bulking phase, yeah, maybe you could. And but even if you're not in a book, maybe you can have a cookie and develop yeah. a healthy relationship with food and know that one cookie won't deter but your progress. But it should be the 80-20 rule. You okay. should not be getting the majority of your macros and calories from my, from uh, micronutrient undense food. <laughs> Foods that are not dense in micronutrients. Micronutrient, pure vitamins and micro minerals. Micronutrient sparse. Food. Sparse foods, right? I use so, the adult word. So again, you want to focus on getting your food from, you know, getting high quality foods that are micronutrient dense into As well as the appropriate foods. macro. Correct. The next is the individualized approach. So everybody that we talk to has a slightly different macronutrient ratio depending on their goals. You know, your sex, age, weight, your physical activity level, your goals, are you leaning out? Are you trying to pack on muscle mass? Are you right. focusing more on cognitive yeah. or, performance? Or are, are there some health concerns, mm -hmm. you know, where we're linked up with a doctor to address certain things? You know, are you diabetic? Are you this? Um, do you have some autoimmune disease and we need, you know, higher fat? You know, there, there are many different reasons, but when you just count total calories, it doesn't let you, um, customized the way following macronutrients does. Exactly. The next would be the balanced macronutrient ratios. And this is so important, sorry. Yeah, no, do you, do you want to take the lead on that one? <laughs> well, if I do, I'm just gonna yell my own things out. You can read the science version of it first and I'll do the Randy part. So the balance of having the right balance of macronutrients is really what supports not only your progress, but also your energy levels and just optimal health functioning in the body. Yeah, this is the difference between just cutting calories and hoping you look good versus having a more scientific planned approach and you know really making sure your body composition goes where you want it to Right, go. so stable energy levels, <clears throat> supporting muscle growth and repair, and also promoting hormonal balance. Yes. So hormones are very, very important. Tremendous. And they dictate pretty much everything our body yeah, does. Yeah, we talk about that now, I feel like once an episode. So. We really do. <laughs> the next one is improved uh, hunger management and staying satiated. This is a tremendous, uh, uh, benefit of macronutrient. Right. So you want to have okay. make sure that you're having the right amount of protein, fat, and carb. And I put some more emphasis on an adequate amount of protein and also fiber intake from your carbohydrates is very important. It's going to help keep you fuller longer um, and reduce your hunger levels. If you are solely focusing on calories and all your calories were coming from nothing but fat and carbs, and fat and carbs you may notice you're feeling a lot hungrier than you would yeah. like. Or in terms of protein, if a lot of your Foods coming from shakes, they're a lot quicker digesting than whole foods. So we'll always tell people, eat your whole foods, eat your uh, balanced meals. The shakes and the bars are like... The bars will satiate you a little better than the, but they're, the shake. But they're, they're backup. If you can eat a whole yeah. meal, eat a whole meal. But if you don't have that meal available to you, have the bar, have the shake. Yeah. It'll keep your blood sugar levels eating but keel the, until you But the eat. bars are a little better for satiety because they have the fiber as well. Nailed it. Or most shakes definitely do not. Correct. The next one would be body composition changes. And we, we also kind of, yeah, kind of touched on that a little bit. We kind already. of touched on that, but again, if we're trying to solely focus on changing your body composition, reducing body fat while maintaining or even increasing lean mass, the macronutrient ratios are vital for that to efficiently happen. The next one would be greater flexibility in food choices. So again, when you're focusing on like just calories or even a meal template, you are Stop. confined. Yeah. You're confined to specific foods um, where you're not allowed to explore your own palate or... What a fancy way of saying that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, or in addition, if, you, if you're craving a specific food, you're... you're stuck and confined to that meal template where here you could say you know what for dinner tonight i don't want to eat chicken i'm not feeling the chicken i kind of want to have a nice steak instead you can learn how to move yeah. things around or like even as simple as a white fish to a chicken's even simpler exactly a turkey breast yeah ground turkey and, but it, of like, yes. and a lot of that especially if you've been you know oh anybody it, it just helps keep you sane having the, the options to change things up 
Uh, yes, and also developing the healthy okay, relationship right. with food, supporting that. Yeah, is when, very tell important. You, when someone tells you no, that's the thing you want. Correct. Uh, the next is nutritional education this and awareness. Big, 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 big. Huge. When I don't say that one's big now. Very, but when you start tracking your macronutrients, you start tracking your food, you truly learn what that food is composed of. And in addition, how many calories are per serving of that food? Um, it's not just like a mindless, I'm going to graze at this bag of trail mix because it's labeled as something that's healthy, right? Yeah, I think a great example is always peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter is like the biggest one. Where people are like, oh, it's my protein. <laughs> it's a very insignificant amount of protein. It's a very high amount of fat. And in addition, the serving size is quite frightening when you actually measure out what two a, tablespoons. A, a measured tablespoon, not right. A didn't. measured tablespoon of peanut butter is, right? Yeah, and that's, you know, <laughs> so people think it's a protein source and, you know, and a healthy source, when in reality, it has a lot of micronutrients. It isn't a Correct. bad source, but it's very mac fat, macronutrient, and calorie dense. Again, which you wouldn't know unless you track. I think that's actually one of the number one things people it's say there. when they track. They go, I didn't realize how much fat is in peanut butter or almonds. And I go, that's fine. Yeah. There's nothing Oils wrong with too, it. Oil. Well, yeah. You heard us both about that. No, yeah. Sorry. But what's important is that you're seeing it and you're learning as you do. And that's the best way to, to learn and inform yeah. yourself. Well, same thing. You know, everyone's, all steaks are created equal. Big difference between a ribeye yeah. and a sirloin. Correct. Good point. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Optimized athletic performance and recovery. So whether you're just an average gym goer, you're a D1 level athlete, you're a professional athlete, an Olympic athlete, no matter what, your body is breaking down when you perform athletic uh, movement performance in the gym, and then you will recover with food as well. So you need to nourish for performance and nourish for recovery so you can come back and perform to your best standards yeah, again and that comes to having yes the calorie counts important but the breakdown is even more important super important and that's where nutrient timing does come into play to optimize things but, but that's another topic for another yeah. time the next one would be blood sugar control so whether you're like a diabetic or not this is important for people like me i am not diabetic but i you need but you get crap you do it for crashes you have this like a roller coaster of energy throughout the day if you can keep yourself um even keel energy wise by being strategic with your nutrient timing and your meal timing, you're going to have a much better time uh, through this whole journey. Yeah. Simple as that. Look, it's as simple that. as that. Like, and it, like when you're at work, you don't want to have that midday crash. If you're feeding yourself correctly, you can avoid it for avoid the most it. part. <laughs> 100%. Uh, and then the next one, the last one, number 10 is long-term sustainable approach. Counting macros is a very sustainable approach. It doesn't have you going through these strict and um, unnecessary phases or fads and, and you know, that yeah. this industry promotes. And, you know, it's different phases. When you're cutting for a show, it's a little tighter. You know, right. if you're living your everyday lifestyle, yeah, you know, here and there, you can ballpark. You can estimate. You know, if you're in a phase where you're taking a break and doing things on your own, like Michelle said, you have that education to look at that chicken and go, okay, I know about, about how much protein is right. in that. Right. And because I've been doing this for so long, do I have to track all the time these days? No, I don't. If you're not for a show. <laughs> right. Right. For a show is a different story, but I can make strategic choices throughout the day based off of the copious amounts of knowledge that I have, um, you know, accumulated, accumulated throughout yeah, the year. And again, so. If you see things not going the direction you want, you're like, let me track a little tighter, see what's up. And you, you find the blind spots. Correct. So those are our top 10 reasons why tracking macros is superior to just tracking calories. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, hit us up. If you want to schedule your complimentary initial consultation at Revolutionize Nutrition, hit us We're up. We're ready for you. We're ready for you. Catch you guys, guys. On Catch you guys side. later. On the flip side. On the flip side.